Hi, this is Bert Kenner. I'm here again with my buddy Rob Burton. Hi. We're going. Hi, Rob. How you doing, Bert? Hi, but hover, hover. We're gonna give. We're gonna give you the Battle of Meridian, big time billiards. This is Antonio Diaz versus Jeff Strong, race to five. This is being brought to you by Poolaholic Apparel, Poolaholic.com, Big Time Billiards of Mississippi, and uh, Diamond Pool Tables, the very best in the business. So, and videos.bertkinister.com. <laughs> you can't have enough. Have your credit card ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here they go. Hey, a side pocket one ball. God, there goes that one in the side. And there goes the white guy in the corner. See, I can't <laughs> figure out. I, I can't figure out the one in the side as a strategy because you don't know where the two ball is going unless you have a pattern rack. I don't understand it. I like it depends pattern. where they rack the two ball, but good players know where it's going to be. If it's racked behind the nine ball, it's going to be at that end of the table. If it's racked in front of the nine ball, it should come down table a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can pretty much tell where, you know, if you've done it for 60 years like I have. <laughs> <laughs> you think, huh? Yep. Oh. I have a video out there that tells you how all of that works. and Check this uh, out. He's going to end this game early. Two Look at nine. That. Boom doggy. That's a nice boom shot. doggy. Well, that's good nice for seeing that. I was busy mapping out the table, and he was busy getting out. <laughs> he was doing his job, and you were doing yours. Yeah, I guess. Hey. Well, you don't know if I really mapped it well. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> Not that one. That <laughs> uh, one. If that's... I want to see it make the one in the side again. I can't do it. No, I mean, it goes sometimes. Yeah. But I used to be able to make the wing nut 90%. Yeah, I can believe that. And park the cue ball pretty much in the center. I'd make yeah. it pop off the one ball. It'd go up in the air. The balls would all run around under uh, it. I I got a buddy, Matt, who does that, and he looks like he's not even hitting the balls. But uh, that little app he's got on his phone says 32 miles an hour. That's an incredibly hard break. It is. He hits it's him like incredibly a hard. That's That means his arm's moving at 16 miles an hour. Yeah, the physics of the thing is the, the cue ball leaves the head of the cue head of the Q stick, the Q tip, leaves a Q tip twice the speed is struck. <laughs> hey, I'm yeah, happy. There's a safety. There is a nice safety here. There is a nice safety. Look at that. There is right a, on the he route. created distance and he hit him. Yep, and he's got and he's got the cue ball on a rail. So he took away a lot of options on this shot. He did. He's got a kick at it to jump at it. And I'm, I'm assuming he's going to end up letting this cue ball go. That's he a didn't shame. Get he didn't, did he kick it back? He kicked at it, and if he had hit it full, I think he would have had a better outcome. He it's thought, hard, yeah. to hard to do that. Except for the miss. That was a nice shot. That all worked out good. You know, he played the two-way shot. He's safe and a shot at it. So he's going to draw. He should be putting this thing up by the seven and trying to get behind the eight. But you got to have more left English on the cue ball than that. Yep. There might have been a better kick there, huh? Yeah. I, I would, you know, I kick a lot more than these guys do when I play safe. You can get the cue ball where you want it a lot of times, much easier. I find the problem with 
not kicking at it is you often are left having to thin the ball, and it yeah. doesn't really go where you want it to go. And the cue ball doesn't either, because you know well, you're, you're firing it free. One of the things you have to learn is how to hit it so thin it doesn't move. Yeah. You know, maybe a quarter inch or something, and the, and the cue ball moves eight, nine feet. That was an unfortunate outcome. It was an unfortunate outcome. There's a big opportunity here. You might be able to run into the two ball, and then uh, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> I don't see the two ball. On the rail. That's the four ball. Oh, I four ball. That. Sorry. I, I'm coming. I, 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 I've seen it. All right. He can make this work. He can, yeah, he can make this work. You got the three. You're right, it's the four. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And he overcut it, so that worked out for him. You always overcut that shot so you can get that safe. Then you, you miss it. You told me that's called the pro side, missing it on the pro side. That is correct. And here's one you should definitely kick at. He shouldn't hit the ball first. You can kick at it behind it with high English. Yeah, see, that's no good. If you kick at it behind it with high English, once it gets, once it hits the ball, that high English becomes low English and stops right at the point of contact. So you can drive the, the four ball down table and stop the cue ball right by the rail here. That's a pretty powerful shot. You don't see it a lot. Not at this level. Do you understand the shot I told you? I mean, sure what, it's coming into the rail with high English. Yep. So when it hits the rail, it's coming off the rail with low English into that ball, and it stops dead. Not many people get the concept. Those of you out there in TV land, you know, if you're, you're, good, if you're a pool player, you've got to understand that. I think you can manufacture a lot of cool shots with that if you just play around with it. And it's not hard. It's not hard to learn. It's just hard to understand. If it goes in with high, it comes out with low. Well, it's just keeping its rotation. That is exactly correct. It was an unforced error. I'm afraid it may have consequences. Yes. As in Sayonara De Niro. I hate unforced errors. Yeah. I hate it's errors. When you get, it's bad enough when you get hooked, but when you do That's it too right. Safe. Oh. I come, I, you know, I come two rails. I come straight across, and I make sure I hit the rail on the other side. I don't scratch. Once I've hit the rail on the other side, it's going to bounce off a little bit, and I'll be close to straight in. Hmm. I don't want it to come. Well, I wouldn't like it. I would want it lower down table. On the, the simple bar table, this is, you know, easy, but not the way I just shot it. Of course, I'm not down there, am I? <laughs> the game is so much easier from the booth. It is much easier from the booth. Man, I play good from here. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> I could never live through what it would take. I think this is a 128-man field. Man, that's big. This is a it's huge. big. I couldn't, you know... I'll, you have to have the stamina of King Kong to yeah, still be there at the end. Not easy. Not Especially, easy. Man, you get on the B side, you can be waiting around for five, six hours for your next shot. Oh, it's awful. I've waited. I've waited 25 hours. It's very difficult. It really and is. I won the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> 
I got to tell you, you if, if you watch snooker at all and you watch, they'll play, you know, best of 35 games. And then that's, you know, one session. They'll do another session like that. I don't know how they stay awake and how they stay focused. Okay. It takes In my time. life, I've played five days without sleep. Really? Yep. It takes tremendous focus. I, I, I can't do it. I played against Davey Webb. He was from Maywood, Illinois. We played at Stardust Bowl on Columbia Avenue in Hammond, Indiana. Crossroads of the nation for pool back then, five days. Wow. And I didn't play. At the end of five days, I started never, ever, ever missing any ball I could see. And Davey could only take a little bit of that, and he was gone. Huh. And so then by, five, went, <laughs> by five days, you felt you were finally in stroke, huh? I thought if I didn't finish this off, I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. I believe it. Five days. Something yeah. inside of me, you know, it says, you're going to die. You either come on with it and, and finish this guy off. We, that was the days when you played till the other guy quit. And I played perfect pool for seven hours. Perfect pool. It must have felt incredible. I was numb. I, I know I did it. I'm not, I've never, I've never repeated that performance in my life. Would you push here, Bert, or would you? Oh, I push. Push. I wouldn't push to there. Nelly can shoot at this ball, and he has a chance to make uh, the two ball also. Or you can shoot ball. <laughs> well, the the problem on this table is speed control. It's yeah. so small. You have to do that over a long distance, thin cut, and the cue ball is going to run. Yeah, most people have no idea how to hit the ball accurately, softly, and view it with light. Oh, it's almost a good shot. He brought the cue ball all the way back down the table. Well, it worked out all right for him. But, you know, you hit the rail first in front of this two, it'll come automatic around three rails for the three ball. That was a nice shot. Uh, I well, would hit the rail first. <laughs> <This> <laughs> I learning... would have hit the rail first. <laughs> <laughs> this learning to hit the ball slow, I think it's the sort of thing where it takes a lifetime to learn, but a minute to master. You know, once you see yeah. it, once you get it. Once you realize how powerful a, a club that is in your bag, but most people won't do the work to hit the ball accurately, softly. It doesn't, you know, you think you can do it whenever you want till you're out of your mind. Yep. That's very difficult. And here it comes. He's going to the air. And he hit it. Are you the one that told me that pulling out a jump cue gives you higher odds of losing the game? I think Somebody so. Might have been you. Jump cues are made as a gimmick. Whoever told it to me said, if you pull out the jump cue, you've as good as lost the game against a good player. I don't know if it's true. but Well, sometimes, you know, the good, player, the good players jump pretty good now. But 80% of the time when people jump, they would have been better off kicking. But you can't tell them that after they spent 400 on a jump kill. <laughs> <laughs> and they can jump things. So here, that's, this is interesting. He's coming off at an angle. Rails. So I better be on. Yeah, that's that's the right shot. But you don't. He didn't play that with top. You play that one with bottom. <sighs> you play that with just center ball, really. Why would you play with bottom? Because you're going to turn it into top spin off that object ball. Mm -hmm. But I guess you're right. It just uh, it just stopped there. Mm -hmm. Whatever he did was. Well, if you if it's actually a sliding ball when it hits that ball, it's going to stop pretty close to where it gets hit. If it hits, if you hit it full. Mm -hmm. If you hit it with low. You're going to shorten the angle. You might not even hit the ball. You can you can hit the ball, the cue ball, into the side rail here with low English, 
and pass the side pocket and make it curve into the other corner pocket. I mean, it had nothing to do with the game, kids. Just a lesson. Four, five, six, seven. What do you think? You think he's going to get out? It's good odds. Good odds. Okay, I'm going. You know, I might take some of that. It's <laughs> good odds. Well, they, they, now I don't want any of it. Now, I've seen people mess this up. I wouldn't try to draw this back more than one or two inches. He's following it. You know, I wouldn't do that. He's right where he could have been. Well, he's a good place. It's not what I would have done. I take your point. You know, if you just stop the ball, a few things will go wrong compared to top or bottoms. For sure you get a, a good shot on that ball. You get a shot you should be 100% at. Especially on a small table. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The, the pockets on this are magnanimous. <laughs> is that a word? Somebody look that up. Yes, it is now. <laughs> it's huge, right? <laughs> Ginormous. Like, ginor there you go. That's a word. That's what they used to describe dinosaurs, right? They were ginormous. Absolutely. Like me. <laughs> like, dinosaur hey, ginormous. shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say we, it was you. I said it was me. I mean, yeah, well, we both puffed up pretty nicely here <laughs> during, the, during, the, during the pandemic. It's been good. While everyone else was hoarding toilet paper, I was hard, hard, hoarding cor carbs. <laughs> I wasn't putting them on the shelf. I wasn't <laughs> hoarding toilet paper. I was using it. <laughs> All right. Now hide that ball. Well, that leaves a jump to hit it. You know that you can get two one and a half pound lobsters live sent to your house live for a hundred bucks. Have you done it? Not yet. <laughs> well, I, you know, I got to get the water boiling <laughs> first. <laughs> if it's going to be alive, they're going to be here quick. Yep. Lobster man, I think's the guy from, from Maine that's, that ships it. I like the claw meat, so I got to get the whole lobster. <laughs> eat the little, uh, the little arms too. I eat every, I eat everything. Oh, I don't eat the shells. <laughs> Not a horn eater, huh? No. Or a shell eater. Well, I guess it's the chondroitin in there is good for your joints. I need something good for my joints. So far, I've been using titanium. <laughs> Sadly, me too. <laughs> cobalt chromium. Mine is cobalt chromium. Is it well? <laughs> so it goes ding at the airport. That's the real key point. Oh, yeah. I, I, I make everything go off everywhere. First, the thing went off at Heathrow. And then they did my computer. A friend of mine had made my laptop for me. And the hard drive was in a box that couldn't be x-rayed. There's a custom made computer. Anyway, they sprinkle fairy dust on it to see if it's exploded. And, it and I got mad and I was in a room for 48 hours at Heathrow. Matter like that. Huh? Oh. Well, if I could have just kept my mouth shut and act, you know, like a human being. <laughs> this was before 9 11. Well, last, ma last match, we were talking about landing on the correct side of the ball and how important that is. That's the whole secret of playing good position is landing on the correct side of the next ball. On this little table with these big pockets, it's hard to see how he wouldn't get out. You haven't watched me play enough. I can find a way. Well, he's got the 
he's got to get into and you know that's the from no well he's not going to get into him here nope i would have thought i would have thought about breaking him up with that angle i had the angle to do it now how is he going to do it when you have the angle to do something that needs to be done don't hope you get a good angle again. You'll end up like this guy. Get the job done. As early as you can deal with a problem, deal with the problem. That's good advice for life, not just for uh, pool. Definitely, it is good advice for life. You got a problem, go 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 to sleep again until it's taken care of. I like that. That's why I take sleeping pills. I always have a problem. <laughs> well, it looks like he may have to bank this ball. That's, uh, he, he he, might, uh, you can stop it right behind that nine, play it three rails. He, he, thinking, put, go ahead. he also might have been able to just clip, just clip the edge of the pocket there and have it go in if he could hit it slow enough. Yeah, but then look where he's, you know, he needed to, sh to shoot the six around three rails and stop behind a nine. This guy almost did it right. He should have hit it farther down the table and had the six on the end rail. Now, if this guy knows how to, how to snap his cue ball, how to draw the rock, The mistake most people make here is they put low left on this shot. It is just low English, children. Just low English. It will start to move to the left. Then if it's perfect low English, the axis rotation being horizontal, it'll draw back like that did. But you got to make the ball. I shoot this in the corner all day long. I don't know about you. Well, I don't shoot it in the side. And I'm not looking to get down here straight in on the on the eight ball. I just want to get high or low of the nine, depending on your perspective. It's a good shot. See, he's on the wrong side of the nine, though. Yes. But yeah, he's got a shot on the eight. It's he's a got a shot. Thing. He should win. Two, you know, he should get there two rails. Once you get to the end rail and bump off the other end rail, you know, it should be nothing but gravy. Wavy gravy. You know who that was? I do not. No. I do know you got to bear down here. Pay attention and not miss this ball. And you need to understand that ball straight in. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people can fathom that. You know, it's it's funny. Um, you told me that a long time ago. And um, what happens is you first go up to shoot it and you say it's not straight in because you line up a straight in shot and it's clearly not that. But if you shoot that ball enough as a straight in shot, your perception changes. Well, you can stop the cue ball bet on that shot straight in. Huh? The last yeah. bet I made was at Red Shoes Billiards before the pandemic hit us with a guy that's dead now from Corona, you know, Pontiac John. I've known him since I'm 15. I had an angle like that, and he said, I told him I could stop the cue ball dead right there. And he said, it's impossible. You got everybody to come look at it. It's about a thousand. He bought a thousand. I stopped it stone cold dead. Well, How did you do that? How did you do that? You know, I told him, you know, if you want to ride the pony, you got to buy a ticket. <laughs> but I, I mean it. Your perception will change. If you shoot that ball enough, you will start seeing it differently. You will see it differently. It takes time. It takes more time than most people will want to put in, but it truly is worth it because and all those to, shots become straight shots. And you have to suspend disbelief. Yeah. The, you can't trust your eyes. They're not giving you an objective picture of reality. No two people's eyes are balanced the same way. Everybody sees everything differently. 
Yep. In my opinion, the only human being that sees what's actually there in the world is Alison Fisher. I can't see any flaws in her, anything she does. She's a great snooker player, and she's a pretty great nine ball player, too. Oh, she's a, she's, and she's a great human being. You know, I used to be in the stands having uh, Doc and Tonics with her mother, oh, yeah. <laughs> who is a hoot. Her mother was just a tremendous individual. I had more fun with her mother. <laughs> oh, it's just a riot, just a riot. I love them both. I think that worked out. It did work out for them, but this is Mr. Jump Q, right? Yep. Go ahead, jump that ball, draw it back for the three on the side. Show me. <laughs> you gotta show me. Well, he's kicking at oh, it. Oh, he's kicking at it. He's he he must have taken a look at the book while, after that last one. <laughs> hey, doesn't know how to control the speed very good, but he's all right. I but that guess. worked out. You know what? That worked out. On this easy table, you can probably cut that, but you got to let the cue ball loose. Or you can kick behind it and hit it into the rail above the side pocket or below the side pocket, whatever you're pushing. But don't hit it first. Don't hit it first. I mean, he got away with it, but that's a serendipitous arrangement with fate. That means he got lucky, kids. <laughs> well, my instinct is that whoever wins this safety bottle battle is going to have a route home. There's not much more trouble. He hit it. He let it go, and he's... No, I think he can see the whole. He can see them. Yeah. He can see them. Alvin, you got to get a table, a, a camera right over that table. Well, he can't see it completely. The jump cue's out. I spent $400 on this piece of uh, carbon fiber. $10. No, he's got a wooden one. No, that, that costs $10 to make. I've made a lot of cues. Those things cost about 10 bucks to make. And it worked out. It worked. That worked out real good. That works. He's just got to miss the side pocket here. He's okay. Oh, he's going to miss. He's going to miss the side pocket. So table one. Jack in table one. He's got to, he, he needs to know how to hit this ball softly with center ball. He'll miss the side pot. What happened? Oh, Alvin, quit switching them cameras around. Hey, we got a lot of cameras, kid. You're confusing me. Well. Well, this is a tricky one. They should just shoot the three into the rail. And, and leave it in front of the six and the cue ball uh, float down table. No, oh my God. What well, the hell? Is it? I don't know what it is. As usual, off. that was the right answer. <laughs> hobo, hobo. All right. Now we're cooking with gas here. Now we are. You don't use any left or right, just low here. Oh, he goes all the way to the rail. Oh, oh. You got the angle, that's good. Yep. This is tough. You got to hit it with high, and you got to hit the. You have to hit the eight ball here. That eight ball. So that means with these big pockets, he can play it to hit the rail before the hole. He, that would have allowed him to hit the eight ball. Now he's got the Z pattern. This which is, is which is on the six pointed star, by the way. Volume this is, built it. Go ahead. This is the most miserable darn shot ever. The scratches um, everywhere you shoot this. 
Yeah, but he got away with it. He hit it good. That's the Z it. pattern. He That's volume play. five, building the six point of star. Tells you how to do that. Videos.burkinister.com. Poolaholic.com. Our, that's the apparel sponsor. And I have so much of that in the closet. I have a basket of it in the car I haven't brought in. I just had wash. It's That's good stuff. And Diamond Billiards. The absolutely best billiard table, pool table ever made. Ever made. They're wonderful. They are yeah. wonderful. I think if you had any choice of any table in the world, what would you get? Get a diamond table, obviously. That's right. That's right. They got a built in, very clever leveling system. The rail box is one piece. And it, well it just rolls in and they turn it over, level it, and they're out. I made that one ball all the that's, way down here, man. Look at this. Look at that. that's that's a break and a half. Look at this. Well, I opened them up, but I I don't know. If that's a two, he's all right. And he's got to draw that ball back or hit it with just tie. That worked out good. He doesn't give. They're not giving me the time to say what to do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell, uh, we'll, we'll, next one, we'll tell him to slow down. Uh, this guy, oh, oh, oh. it depends how good he is. If he can bank that ball, but I'd I'd bank it our side of the side pocket, all the way to the end rail. So no, I don't I don't think I like what he's doing. If no, you he, bank that, if you bank that ball past the side pocket, our side of the side pocket. You might make it, and yeah, you you might come very safe with that. That's a great shot. Yeah, well, he got well. He got you know, but he didn't he didn't hide the other guy. If he'd have brought it all the way to the end rail where the where the spot from the light is, if he'd have sent it down there, he would uh, might have a chance back at the table. I don't see him getting back to the table here. Uh, this is Whispering Joe Wilson. Nobody out there even has any <laughs> idea who Whispering Joe Wilson was. You know who Barry Berman was? I do not. Sportscaster for ESPN? I do not. No, well, he was the first guy to... He started out on ESPN doing pool matches. Oh, no. Uh, Oh, no. Well, see, he didn't know it was straight in. Really? I know. Kids, and wind that back and look at it. That's straight in, I swear. It, the pockets are bigger than you think. There's not just one spot to hit on the pocket. That's right. You look at them until they become straight in in your mind. But that was straight in. That was I mean, straight all, that was, all that one <laughs> was straight in. There was well, no optical hard. illusion there. It is hard to hit the ball straight. Sometimes it goes funny. It's real hard. It's real hard to see a straight line. You know, if you look at a straight line and if it's long enough, you'll see a curve left to right, depending on which dominant eye you have. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a straight line, you know, several hundred yards long, mm -hmm. right? as long as you can see it. The farther away it gets, the more it curves one way or the other, and that's a defect. In everybody's eyes, except Allison Fisher's. <laughs> I'm serious, man. I've watched, you know, she can, she, what she sees in front of her, I think is objective reality. That's amazing. That might have been a tad brisk. What you do here is you aim it, you overcut it. You overcut it. Because if you miss it, you overcut it, you're going to make it a lot of times. But if you miss it, you're going to leave it safe. So if you hit the end rail side of the pocket, it's going to bounce up and leave a shot. If you hit right. the side rail side of the pocket, it's going to bounce to the end rail and likely leave it. It should no be shot. in the middle. You hit it at his speed, it should be in the middle of the table. But he hit it good. So we've got. Uh, Antonio Diaz has three. Jeff Strong has two. 
Yeah, it seems like it's obviously an even match. This is a handicap tournament. No. This guy looks like he has our problems. He could get belly hooked on one. Not on this short table, though. Listen, when we were <laughs> discussing getting belly hooked, which we both do, <laughs> the other day I told you I've got the solution. It's that you've actually now got an extra point of contact on the ball. And that really fixes it. It's actually better to have a belly hook. Well, you're, I guess more stable at the it's table. I've been, <laughs> I've been using Vaseline. <laughs> you're just, just a tad below center with a little tad of right English. It goes down, you get on the right to correct side of the nine ball, you come to lead. No. He wasn't listening. <laughs> now he's going to try and cut it. If you're trying to cut this ball, overcut it, overcut it, overcut it. Because if you don't overcut it, the mistake is he aimed at the center of the back of the pocket. There's a rail in the way, children. There's a rail in the way, children. Well, here he overcut it, and even though we missed, that's the right way to miss it. It's unfortunate yeah. it's a miss. No, nah, he didn't over... That guy... Who are we talking about, him? The other gentleman. No, nah, he didn't know. overcut it. He sure, hit, he hit the, the... Oh, he hit the... Oh, we'll have to rewind it after. Yeah, fight. I, he didn't overcut it. He went into the, the rail before the pocket. I saw him going to the side rail, but I won't. Ah, uh, well, it. he'll. I blink a lot now. I'm older. I come two rails out of the corner, a little low right. Hit it softer than you think you have to if you can hit it. No. Bad things can happen to you going that way. They didn't, but they could. He was headed to the hole. You got to take that scratch out of it. And That's Jeff Strong good. gets four. That's a really good lesson. Go away from the scratches. Find a different way. Never take a scratch route. Never take a snooker route. If you take a route where you can get snookered, you know, you know how big an object ball is? It's well, seven and three quarter inches big. Yeah, they're bigger than they look because when you're hitting at it, you can put the cue ball all the way to one side and then all the way to the other. So it is That's seven and size. three quarter inches. Three times. It's almost three times the size. Yeah. Well, it is three times the size. Well, you got to hit it. You the ball is two. The ball is two and a quarter inches, and so three of those is three and three quarter inches. I predict that one does not go in a side pocket, but the way the racket looks like the eight might go in the corner. It's in the corner. Well, nobody won. So the major problem here is the eight in the three. three. Yeah. Getting on the twos don't give me either. Now when you hit it, well, I guess he's still got a full, he's got a full pocket whether he knows it or not. He might be able to get a break out here. If he thought if he uses straight low English, he can break those balls up. If he uses it with low right, he's gonna miss them. He might still nip the eight, which is good. You should be trying to hit the eight here. Yeah. I was about to ask. I think eight ball. You oh think? yeah, you, you hit the eight ball. You got. You have a shot. You hit the three ball. You probably you're gonna be in trouble. All right, you can duck. That's or a good you duck. can duck. That's a good duck. Straight line looks wavy to me. I think he's got to go around. He's got to. He's got to kick it this fall. You hit the, if you hit the 
rail as close to the side pocket you can with the most right English you can put on the ball. You might make this ball. If you hit the rail first. But you got a big ball if you can if you can spin down there. If you hit the rail first, you hit the ball first. Yep. But you have to be you have to know one rail kicks how they work. So and you know if you did that shot you'd be moving towards the three. That's right. pretty he wants to make the nine. I can smell it in him. I'm move out of the way there. He wants to jump this ball and get the cue into the nine. Pobrecito. Let's see. Even if he makes it, it's the wrong shot, kids. Making that two ball or hitting it is easier than you think. But you gotta know. You have to know. He made it. Oh, what a shot! A oh my shot. God! Oh! That was remind me not to not remind me not to match <laughs> up with him. Holy catfish! Holy catfish! Shot fire! That was a great shot. It was a tremendous shot. <laughs> oh. Maybe never to be repeated. It was so good. Well, that that couldn't happen on a on a large table. I think that was it. No, yes, that was it. Jeff Strong wins the race to five. Congratulations, Jeff. This was a great match. It sure was. Remember our sponsors, Diamond Billiards. The very best pool tables in the business. They have a plan that will make them affordable for you. Call them up. Tell them Bert Kinister sent you. That might not help any. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm well known over there. <laughs> and Poolaholic Apparel. I wear it just because they have a 3X. <laughs> And, and videos.bertkinister.com. It's hard to find better education material than that, so It'd check it out. Tough. It'd be tough. I wish I was teaching calculus. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, kids. This is goodbye for me and Rob. We'll see you next Bye. time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.